Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to Making Dollars and Cents at the Box Office. Movie houses across the globe this weekend had tons of personality. Given that you could go see a super over-the-top action B-movie, a film about race and gender inequality, or a film literally about a man with multiple personalities. Leading the pack this weekend was the latest from cult classic director M. Night Shyamalan, Split, which well exceeded expectations and ended the weekend domestically with $40 million. This effectively quadrupled its production budget, which already makes it a huge success, but that's only the half of it. Split is now the fifth largest January opening of all time, and it's the fourth largest opening for any of Shyamalan's films. Split received a B-plus from opening day audiences on CinemaScore, and to me, it's kind of obvious why this film did so well. First, Shyamalan has a pretty devoted following that loves his work even when it's at its worst, Secondly, The Visit from 2015 was very much a game changer for him as a lot of moviegoers that were on the fence about his directing quickly changed their minds. And third, this is a thriller that is more than just a jump scare, keep you on the edge of your seat, throw some cheap gags at you type of film. It's a film that has layers upon layers underneath the surface, in part to the ridiculous talent that is James McAvoy and Anya Taylor-Joy. I mean, I dare say this is one of McAvoy's most challenging and yet still brilliant roles yet. All three of these things make this suspense thriller well worth its merit, and it has the ability to stand the cold competition of Oscar hopefuls and all the other pitiful dread that descends upon us this time of year. But the real surprise this weekend, at least for me, comes in the form of Triple X Revenge of Sander Cage, which despite every prediction I made and read, still took second place this weekend. The third in the Triple X series brought in $20.1 million over opening weekend, and while yes, that is a little less than a quarter of its production budget, the film did however dominate at the international box office. From the 53 markets that it debuted in this past weekend, it pulled in $50.5 million internationally, leading to an overall global cum of $70.6 million in just three days. For a film expected to be crashing hard this weekend, the film was clearly successful to resurrect what felt like a dead franchise and was able to secure a pretty safe bet that Paramount will probably be pushing yet another sequel from this franchise on us in the near future. Hidden Figures also had a successful third week in a national release, as it did hold over pretty well, all things considered. The 20th Century Fox film and now Oscar nominee only saw a 24.6% decline in ticket sales, leading to a 15.7 million finish, which won at third place. Now yes, would I have liked to have seen this film take second and beat an over-the-top action B-movie? Obviously. But now that Hidden Figures has scored some Oscar nominations, I have hopes that it'll continue to pull in moviegoers interested in checking out the film for a first, second, or in my case, fourth time. And falling just outside the top 10 this weekend was Michael Keaton's The Founder, which finished 11th place with 3.4 million McDoubles. I mean dollars. Having only opened in just over 1,100 theaters, this isn't the worst performance of an Oscar hopeful film opening in a smaller nationwide release. But given that it did not, in fact, snag any of those nominations after Tuesday morning, I don't think this film is going to be serving up anything fast in the coming weeks. And the final film which opened in an even smaller theater count was The Resurrection of Gavin Stone and pulled in $1.2 million. Yes, that places it at spot number 19 this weekend, but given that the budget is rumored to only be $2 million, that's not too shabby. Looking ahead to next weekend, we have three newcomers that look like they're gonna kinda be a mix of just anything from kind of intriguing to utter filler content solely designed to be weak counter Oscar programming. The first and maybe the most intriguing of those three is Gold, starring Matthew McConaughey. It's based on the true story of Kenny Wells, played by McConaughey, who's a businessman down on his luck who teams up with a geologist to strike a big on rumored gold mines deep within the uncharted jungles of Indonesia. But once discovering the gold, the adventure only then begins as the duo's biggest challenge will be keeping it as they go up against some powerful Wall Street figureheads. This doesn't look to be McConaughey's best performance by a long shot, but I do appreciate that he's taking on a less physically appealing role than he has in recent years. Though the film that actually stands the best chance of doing decent this weekend is the latest in the Resident Evil franchise, The Final Chapter. This will mark the sixth release in the Resident Evil series, and it's the first one in nearly five years. I don't personally think it's gonna crack $25 million, but if it does, this may not in fact end up being the final chapter after all. And the final newcomer for this coming weekend is the film that I am arguably the least interested in seeing, A Dog's Purpose starring Josh Gad and Dennis Quaid. It's the story of a devoted dog's journey to discovering the meaning of its own existence through the lives of the multiple people it comes in contact with and how it teaches those humans how to laugh and to love. This may be the strangest existential movie I think I have ever seen. And it's about a dog! 
Plus, the film already has a lot of controversy surrounding it, given some of the leaked footage from the behind the scenes, showing the crew forcing one of the dogs on set into a simulated rushing river, which it was clearly not comfortable getting into. I completely agree that what they were doing was wrong, and I fully stand behind PETA's urging of moviegoers not to go and support behavior like this on films like these. But if I'm being honest, I can think of so many more reasons why you shouldn't go and waste your time on a movie like this. On a positive note though, Oscar nominations did just come out, so you can be guaranteed that some of your favorite films from last year will be getting a reprise in theaters. So this weekend, head out to your local film house to support those Oscar nominated films or the three newcomers that we have coming this weekend. As always, if you like this film, click subscribe, comment, or like if you want to join the conversation, and we'll see you next week on Making Dollars and Cents at the Box Office.